Fabricadabra at LPL presents Embroidered Hummingbird Plushie. Today we're going to make this gorgeous plushie of a hummingbird using felt sequins and embroidery floss. I have a couple of QR code links to bring you to websites that I think are very useful. The first is Squishy Cute Designs on Etsy.com and this is the place where I purchased the instructions and pattern for the hummingbird, the original hummingbird that I did. I changed the instructions just a little bit, but it's pretty much the same thing. The second link is to Cutie Crafts on youtube.com. And I'm providing this because it is a wonderful resource. It's the resource I use when I need to see a really good video, short video of just the one stitch that I'm trying to do. And it shows you slowly and carefully. It's, it's a wonderful resource. So if you don't understand the stitches from my video of it, then please go to QTCrass on YouTube.com because this lady makes really awesome videos. Materials we'll need are wool blend or 100% wool felt in several colors, embroidery floss in several colors, and sequins in one or more colors, and about a medium size. Next, we'll need some polyester fiber fill. You only need a small amount, so don't worry about getting too much. And that's gonna be for stuffing the bird. Uh, you're also gonna want some sulky stick and stitch stabilizer. It is both printable and it rinses off and it sticks to the felt. So this is going to help you so that you can print pattern out onto it and then embroider and then be able to rinse it off. Last but not least, we need the Harold the Hummingbird PDF, which again, you can buy from Squishy Cute Designs on Etsy.com. Now for tools, sewing tools we're going to need is just a few, an embroidery needle with a nice big hole <laughs> so that you can fit the floss through, small, very sharp pair of scissors, preferably embroidery scissors or maybe just a little bit bigger than that, and a hot glue gun, or if you don't have that, some tacky glue like Aileen's. Now we're gonna start with a little prep work. If you have one of our grab and go kits for this project, simply start cutting your pieces according to the attached patterns, okay? If you do not have the kit, you wanna download that PDF pattern from Squishy Cute Designs, okay? Print out the pattern onto the stick and stitch stabilizer, cut out the pattern pieces, then peel off the back of each piece and place onto the color of felt that you want. Finally, you're going to cut the pieces out from the felt. And this is what the pattern pieces will look like when you finish cutting them out. So as you, you can see, you have one wing cap, you have a chest, you have a throat, you have an eye strip, and you have a tail feather knot. You also have two body pieces and two beak pieces that are exactly alike. And then you have your three tail feathers, which are slightly different sizes, and then you have six wing feathers, and again, those are slightly different sizes and shapes. Typically, floss, embroidery floss, comes in six strands, and so you don't always need to use all six of those strands to do embroidery. Sometimes you want to use much less, like one or two, and then sometimes you want to use more, like three or four, and then other times you want the full six. So this next video is going to show you how to separate your strands and thread your needle. So here I have some embroidery floss. If you tap one of the tips of it, it'll start to separate some of the strands. And then you can decide if you want three, two, one, or however many strands you want. And then you can just easily separate them with your finger. This is not always easy. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult depending on if you get really cheap, poorly made thread or if you get the higher end thread like DMC. This is DMC thread, so it's really kind of going like butter, uh, which is very nice. And so once you've separated your strands, so here I have three strands that I'll be using, and I'm going to snip the tip. That way it makes it nice and flat, and then I moisten it. You can either use your mouth or you can use something like Vaseline or wax to moisten the tip so that it moves easily through the eye of the needle. 
And this can take several tries to get correct, but just keep plugging away at it. You'll get it eventually. Next up, I'm tying the knot at the other end of the floss. And typically with regular fabric, one knot would be sufficient. It's not gonna pull all the way through, but because this is felt, it does sometimes pull through. So what I've done is I'm tying an extra little knot on top of that first knot. And there you go. Now I've got an extra big knot that won't move through the felt. Now for the decorative embroidery that's gonna go on our, on our hummingbird. There are two swirls. One is on the body piece, just under where the chest is. And then the other swirl is going to be on the wing cap. We're gonna use three strands of floss for this. And you want to use, definitely want to use a contrasting color of floss. Now I suggest using a stem stitch. I find it's a very pretty stitch. It's not terribly hard to do the stitch and it is particularly, looks particularly nice on curves. But if you find trouble doing the stem stitch, then go ahead and do a back stitch instead. I'm gonna show you the stem stitch on the body piece. So we're gonna go all the way around the swirl, but we're actually gonna start from the other end. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go one stitch length ahead from the edge of the stomach and we're going to come up from the back and then we're going to go backwards right to the very very edge of the felt we're not going to go past the felt we're just going to go right at the very edge and we're going to come up from the bottom and we're going to come through that loop that we've made there come through the top of it or through the right side of it okay just like that and then we're going to go ahead another stitch okay and we're going to pull that through until we form a small loop or a large loop it doesn't matter which and we're going to bring our needle up through the back but in between the the two points that we just made and so here I am, I'm gonna just pull that all the way through. And of course you wanna make the loop, you wanna hold the loop with your left thumb and you want to pull the needle and floss through to the right. And again, we're gonna do this one more time. So we went ahead a stitch length, we go down with the needle, make a loop, hold it with our left thumb, push through the needle from the back, right in the middle, and then pull that floss through to the right. And it makes a very nice little stitch. And so I've forwarded it ahead a bit and I'm down to the last, to a, a point where I, when the curve gets tighter, you want to make your stitches shorter. So I'm starting to make shorter stitches because the curve is much tighter towards the inside of the swirl. And so I'm still doing the same stem stitch, but again, it's just a smaller stitch. The length of the stitch is smaller. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I reach the inside tip of that swirl. And you can see I've jumped ahead here to the final stem stitch. I'm doing this a little bit quickly. You can see it's very tiny. It's a very tiny stitch. But I'm making it. And then I'm gonna do one final push through from my needle from the top down through that same hole so that I can bring my thread to the back, my floss to the back so that I can tie it off. And this is how I typically tie off for my embroidery. I basically just make a little knot and then make a second little knot. And that ties it off and clip the end. Now we need to remove the stabilizer from our embroidered swirled pieces. So we're going to rinse that under tap water, warm water, 
water will make it go faster, but you can still use cold water, let it dry. You might also want to remove the stabilizer from the rest of your pieces, although I do recommend leaving the stabilizer on your beak pieces as it will help to keep the tips from fraying. Of course, nothing would be complete without me showing you a demonstration of how easy it is for the stabilizer to be removed. You can even use your fingers if there's a little bit left around where the floss is. Use your fingers to kind of agitate it away and hold it under the water and it rinses right off. And then you could press it between towels, paper towels, napkins, whatever you got to help take off a lot of the extra moisture and then let it air dry for a few minutes before you start stitching on it again. Now we're moving on to the chest and throat pieces. These are gonna be done with two strands of floss. We'll be using a back stitch, which is a very simple stitch and matching thread. So you wanna match your thread to the color of the, of the felt pieces that you're attaching, not to the body piece. So white for the chest and then some kind of silvery grayish beige color for the throat piece. And next up is a demo. Now for showing you the back stitch, you can see I'm coming up from the back of the body piece and I'm coming up through the chest piece and it's about one tiny stitch length ahead. And then I'm going to go backwards, hence the back stitch. Uh, and then I'm going to go back down over the edge of the chest piece, back down through the body piece. And then I'm going to move ahead one tiny stitch length. I don't know why I made it so tiny, but I did. One tiny stitch length ahead from the first stitch, but from underneath. So I'm going to come up through the back and then pull my floss through and then I'm going to go back down through the end of the first stitch. And that is basically the back stitch. It's really very simple to do. It's one of the more simple embroidery stitches besides the straight stitch, the running stitch, and maybe the whip stitch. And as you can see, I'm, I'm following along the edge of the chest piece. I'm going to do that all the way around the chest piece so that the entire edge of the chest piece is attached to the body piece. And I know this is a little bit fast, but you can kind of see I'm doing the same stitch just over and over. Now for the eye stripe, we're gonna attach the eye stripe to the chest piece and the body piece right over where the throat piece is. We're going to use two strands of floss and we're gonna use a back stitch with black floss. Now we want to attach the tail feathers to the body. We're going to use three strands of floss and we're going to place one tail feather at a time. So we're going to take the first tail feather, put that one down and then overlap each, you know, each next feather. But when we put that first feather down, we're going to attach it using what's called a straight stitch, which I have a video to show you. And here's the demo of the straight stitch attaching the first tail feather. So you can see I'm placing tail feather number one down onto the left side of the tail of the body piece. And then I'm gonna come up from the back at the rounded end of the feather. And I'm going to push my needle through, pull my floss through, and then just make a straight long stitch all the way towards the end of the pointed end of the tail feather and pull that through. And there is our straight stitch. What I do differently is that I turn it onto the back after that first straight stitch, and I'm going to put a little anchoring stitch, just one little tiny stitch in that goes barely through the felt. It doesn't even go through to the top of the felt. It goes like halfway through the felt. And that locks that into place. So next we're going to attach the dot and a sequin on top of the dot to the pointed ends of the tail feathers. We're gonna use three strands of floss and then we're going to thread through the middle of the dot. So we're gonna come up through the back of the, the body, through the tail pieces, through the dot, and we're gonna thread that sequin on it. And then we're going to make a French knot to, to tie it off basically. 
and I have a video coming up of that. Here we go. Uh, I've put my dot in place. Uh, I'm going to put the sequin on top of it. But first I'm going to go through the back of the body piece and then through the middle of my dot, or I'm going to try and go through the middle of the dot, put my floss through. Then I'm going to thread basically the sequin. It has a hole in the middle. I'm going to thread that sequin down all the way to the dot and I'm going to secure it in place using a French knot. Just like I said earlier, to do a French knot, you're going to come up from the back and then you're going to hold your needle tip down near the hole that you're going to go down through, but you're going to wrap your embroidery floss around it three times. And you're going to push the needle back through that same hole that you came up. Okay, and it's taking a little finagling on, sorry about the very poor camera work. Okay, and so you kind of want to hold one end of it while you pull it through and then pull it tight and there is your French knot. The wing feathers. So for the wing feathers, you're going to do those pretty much exactly like you did the tail feathers. So you're going to take your wing feather number one and you're going to put it on the top part of the wing. You do want to make sure to lay the feather slightly over the edge, the top edge of the wing, as you can see in the picture right here in the middle. And you're going to sew a straight stitch, just a, an extra long straight stitch in a contrasting floss. Then you're going to place the second wing feather, just as you did with the tail feathers, you're going to slightly overlap wing feather two on top of the edge of wing feather one and then you're going to continue to sew a um, straight stitch with contrasting floss and then continue that until you finished all six of the feathers just like you're seeing in the picture here on the bottom next up is the wing cap with the wing cap you're going to use two strands of floss First, you're going to place your wing cap over the pointed tips of the wing where they all kind of meet. And then you're going to lay out the, the thin strip that comes off the kind of egg shaped end of it. You're going to put the thin strip along the top of the wing feather. And then you're going to sew that into place using a back stitch and of course, matching floss. Throat and eye sequins. So just like we did the sequin on the tail feathers, we're gonna use three strands of floss, but this time we're gonna use matching floss. We're gonna sew about eight sequins onto the throat of the bird using a French knot. And then we're going to sew one black sequin over the eye stripe as the eye of the bird. Now you may wanna add other sequins onto the other parts of the bird. In this particular example, I sewed a sequin on the very tip of the first wing feather. So we're at the beak. We want to take the two beak pieces and attach them together. We're going to do that using a back stitch, two strands of black floss. And once we're finished with that, we're going to sew the beak to the body, the, the fatter end or wider end of the beak to the body piece that doesn't have the embroidery on it, the embroidered swirl on it. We're going to attach those together using some small straight stitches, like maybe two or three, and the floss should match the body color. Stuffing and finishing. And what I mean by that is we're going to be sewing the two body parts together and stuffing it along the way. So the only part we're not going to stuff is the wings. And I'll show you what we do with that later. But for now, we're going to start sewing the two body pieces together at starting at the wing tip. And we're going to use a blanket stitch, three strands of matching floss. It needs to match the body. And then we're gonna stop at intervals along the way and stuff the body with fiber fill. And here is a demo. Okay, so here is here are my two body pieces. I've laid them together and kind of matched them up around the edges. And so I'm gonna start from the inside up through the top of just the body piece. You'll notice I'm not going through the wing. 
I don't want this to show on the wing. Okay, just the two body pieces. So I started, I came up through, through the inside and now I'm going to push my needle back down through, make a loop and tie that off. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my next stitch and this is where the blanket stitch really starts. I've pushed it down through the two pieces from the top, made a loop and then put my needle through the loop and pulled it tight. And then you're just going to keep doing that all along this side of the body. And we're going to go around the end of the tail. And then that's where we're going to stop to do a little stuffing. So again, I pushed my needle through. I made a tiny little loop. <laughs> oh, there it is. Bigger loop. And pull put my needle through it and just pulled it tight the blanket stitch is a really nice decorative stitch that attaches two pieces together so much better than the whip stitch so here we go i have a blanket stitched my length and up around the end of the tail and now i'm going to stuff that tail with fiber fill and you can use the end of a paintbrush like a small paintbrush to push the cotton in there. You want to stuff it so that it's full, but so that it doesn't stretch out and you see the fiber fill coming out and in, in between the blanket stitches. Now you can see I've sewed a little bit more up the curve of the tail and I'm going to stuff that very narrow part of the tail with a little bit more cotton. And now I'm going to stitch up the throat. And what I'm doing here, and it's my camera works not great here, is I'm only doing the body pieces. So I'm, I'm getting my needle kind of under where the chest piece is and into the felt of the top body piece down through the, of course, the second body piece. And I'm still doing my blanket stitch and I'm going to do that all the way up until I get to the beak. And then I'm going to change to a back stitch. And I'm going to do a couple of back stitches on the beak itself. And then start up my blanket stitch again on the other side of the beak. Once I get past the beak is where I'm going to glue my wings together. And so you can see right here, I'm using my hot glue gun. You could use tacky glue. It doesn't matter. But you want to glue it in such a way that it's not going to get in the way of you stitching the rest of your blanket stitches around the edge. OK, because trying to sew through glue is very difficult and you will often bend your needle if you do manage to make it through. So now you can see I've passed up the beak. I'm going around the head and now I'm on the wing and I'm back to the wing tip. So I'm doing my last one or two blanket stitches here. And then when I get a stitch length away from the first blanket stitch I did at the wing tip, which is right here, I'm simply going to push my needle in through the other side of that, form a loop and pull it tight. And then I'm going to do that, do a loop again in the same spot. And that's going to have tied off my thread in a way that you can't see it from the front. And Fabricadabra. Here is our finished beautiful hummingbird plushie with embroidery on it. Thanks for watching and happy sewing.